The state of Florida is a peninsula surrounded by water. Bonita Springs is home to a lot of wetlands. The Florida Gulf Coast University sits on one of them. The engineering of this beautiful architecture has been done mindful of the important role played by wetlands. The engineering of this campus ensures large areas are free from concrete filling to allow water to drain quickly when it rains or in the event of a storm. The wetlands are recognized as the kidneys of the land. Wastewater from the university is cleaned as they pass through from one end to the other. Professor Brian Bovard is an associate director of the Water School and an associate professor at the Department of Ecology and Environmental Studies at the Florida Gulf Coast University. The people that designed the campus really tried to take advantage of the wetland systems that we've got here because the wetlands perform lots of really important uh, processes that are important to us as a species, right, as humans. And so the water that comes into the campus leaves the campus on the south end and these wetlands have an opportunity to remove nutrients and pollutants out of it but they also help sort of buffer against large storm events like hurricanes that dump large amounts of water and these wetlands can absorb it and then slowly release that out and they design the campus with ponds as well that help sort of move water in excess off the campus today Professor Wayne Everham takes the team on a tour through the wetlands of the FGCU campus. He shows us one of the beautiful attractions on campus, the Cypress Dome, a canopy of cypress trees growing from the wetlands. This is the cypress trees and they grow all around here. This part of the university's campus. Now, mind you, back home, we build in wetlands. And we continue to say that you cannot build in wetlands. But the entire university is built in the wetlands. But they are able to utilize the wetlands in such a way that this serves as the kidneys that purifies the water that comes from the community. So there is that symbiotic relationship between the community, their wetlands, and their very existence, and they go hand in hand. Professor Everham, or Wynne as we call him, emphasizes the importance of wetlands in every environment. I think that we can put people on landscapes like this if we protect good chunks of wetlands and uplands embedded in them, like we've done on this campus. It means that we either build less in any one place or we build up in those places rather than out. And that's a different way of putting people on the land. I don't think, I don't think the solution is to stop building homes for people. People need homes. I think the solution is to think about how they can fit into the land rather than fight with the land. Um, you're fighting with the land if you decide to, to drain this swamp and put something here. You're, you're figuring out how to live with the land if you're honoring the role it this has and finding a way to fit into the landscape instead of impose your will on it. So I think the debate is not about whether we can build or not build in wetlands, but it is about considering what kind of development we can do on wetlands, how we do it, the technology, the know-how, leaving part of the wetland to soak our waste and what we do to the environment, to serve as kidneys for the environment. In Ghana, improper development of wetlands leads to perennial flooding of cities like Accra and Kumase. Perhaps it is not the development of the wetlands that creates the problem, but how it is done that counts. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Florida, USA.